Hey, hello everybody, it's the Last Raider. We are back with another video, and today we are talking about the... Oh boy, we are talking about the retardedness of The Last of Us Part 2. I tried to do this video the last couple of times, and hopefully, because the last two times I tried to put this video up, it kind of went up, and then it was just like slapped back down almost immediately by YouTube. I'm not sure if uh, Naughty Dog was going after it, uh, because they have, the thing is, Naughty Dog has been going out there going after videos. They've been copyright striking, DMCA takedowning, flagging videos like crazy. I'm hoping that I decided I'd take a break for a bit, wait a little bit of time, put a different video out, see if the uh, all the nonsense would end, and we're going to see if this video gets up. But anywho, we're back to The Last of Us Part 2, and... What I was wanting to talk about on this, because I've had time to, you know, watch what's going on, see everything. I wanted to give my two cents on the character of Abby. And specific events that happened. So, spoiler alert, for those of you who have not gotten through the game, uh, I am going to spoil some stuff. Okay? <laughs> so, if you don't want to hear that stuff, be, if, if you really want to try it, I personally, I would say you're, you're wasting your time and your money. Um, but, <clears throat> we'll go to the point of Abby, as to why this why Abby was not, uh, oh, well, anyway, let's, let's just go on, spoiler alert, if you don't want to know, click off the video now and go somewhere else, okay, if you're interested, whoops, just hit my mic, if you're interested, stay for, stay for the video, but anyway, Abby, why in the world, uh, does The Last of Us Part 2 end? Now, so, the basis of the story is, with the original Last of Us, you have a guy who, kind of picks up this little girl and it turns out this little girl is immune to a sort of zombie virus that's going on. And by the end of the game, he has kind of become her surrogate father. Even though he's lost his own family, he grows as a character. Well, in The Last of Us Part 2, there's a certain point where Joel, he plays Abby, and Joel meets up with this transsexual character. Basically, um, a chick who's does more who's more buff from what I've seen in the cutscenes. She is literally more buff and more masculine than the men in the game. They are all much, much thinner build. She looks like a dadgum tank. Alright? She is just I am she looks like um She Hulk does now. <laughs> just this grotesquely massive chick, I mean, to to a point where if you were to silhouette this chick, you would you'd think, oh, that's a dude. Like she has a Captain America build. She is so thick, not in a good way. We're talking swole in terms of muscles. And <clears throat> she ends up finding Joel. She's actually the, um, if I'm understanding this correctly, because I've not played the game, so take what I say with a grain of salt. About story-wise, about what what's going on with the story, this you need to take with a grain of salt. Me going through the the lore of the story, lore-wise, she is the daughter of one of the scientists that Joel ends up killing as he's trying to get Ellie out of a facility because they're going to drill into Ellie's brain to figure out why she's immune. This is it's like you got to make a decision between a girl that you've come to care, a young girl that you've come to care about as your daughter, any dad is not going to make that sacrifice. Okay? The the only time in history you're going to find that as Jesus Christ was sacrificed for people's sins and that was a god making that was god making that decision. But anyway, as we go on, it turns out uh, she finds Joel. Joel apparently from what I also understand, he he makes some stupid decisions that he normally would that are out of character and she beats the hell out of him, basically beats him to death with a nine iron. Uh, Ellie walks in in the middle of the beating. They hold Ellie down, his surrogate daughter, and they she ends up killing Joel right in front of Ellie. Now, the game goes all the way through, and there was a point. Okay, you, you go all the way through the game because there's multiple other children that were there, pe kids or people who were kids at the time when Joel went through the facility. They they had Their parents were killed by Joel. And so they're not the ones that kill Joel, okay? They 
watch as Abby is the one, the sole person who beats the crap out of Joel. There's a couple of reasonings beyond this. So let, me, let me get through. Uh, afterward, Ellie goes out there and she kills every single one of them but Abby. She lets Abby go at the last minute. She apparently gets Abby pinned underwater, almost drowns her, and for some reason gets up off of her. And I remember making this prediction. Because this is where we're going to get to the, the point of why this all happened, why the story went this direction. And it's not it's it's not for anything intelligent other than politics. I'm going to warn you that right now. Back when this game was first leaked, when I was doing... I did a few videos on the Naughty Dog leaks and Naughty Dog's reaction to the leaks. You know, they were DMC takedowning people like crazy. I had a friend of mine who was a big fan of the game, and he was saying, you're going to get The Last of Us 2. And I said, no. And he goes, why not? I said, I've seen the leaks. I saw the spoilers. I said, I'm not a fan of the game. And I said, it's not something... I said, as your friend, I would say, don't buy it. And he goes, why? I said, I'll have to spoil the game for you. And I don't want to... And if you don't want me to spoil the game, just tell me, and I won't spoil it. We played for about two hours and finally he said look you've never you, you always pick good games you always research games he said if you say I don't, shouldn't buy it he said I need to know why I shouldn't buy it and I told him what I knew then which was <clears throat> mind you we were still under the impression that Joel was going to go down fighting these people we didn't know that he was going to go out like an absolute punts he was going to go out weak frail man basically and I made the prediction to him after he said they better, because at th that point we didn't know if you would kill Ellie or not. We, we knew that, or no, not Ellie. We knew Ellie would go after Abby. This is probably another reason why you shouldn't name your characters with such similar sounding names, because you get to confuse them all the time like I just did. But anyway, they uh, Ellie was going to go after Abby, and everyone was like, well, now Ellie is going to go try and find this person and kill him. And then there was some acceptance of that. And I told I told my buddy, I was like, dude, uh, they're not going to kill Abby. He said, dude, why would they not kill Abby? Why, why would they give you that kind of a kill scene and not kill her off? I said, because politics. I said, you're not going to have Ellie go out there and kill Abby. Because Ellie, cause Ellie is only a lesbian woman. Abby is a trans woman sexual woman is, is a trainee. I said, she is higher on the progressive stack than Ellie is. He said, oh crap. He said, what do you think will happen? I said, either for some reason, uh, the, the least likely scenario I came up with was that Abby was going to kill Ellie at the end. But then I told him, I said, that seems like a least likely scenario because for one, you're going to have a lesbian dying at the end because Ellie, later on, is determined to be a lesbian. You're going to have a lesbian dying, which is still a minor, which is still an oppressed group. And then you're also going to have... <clears throat> uh, or you're going to have Abby, who's a trans person. You're going to have oppressed on oppressed violence. And that's probably the least likely scenario that was going to happen. I said, probably the most likely scenario is going to be like in Marvel Comics, where if you look at most comic books, all women love each other now. None of them have a problem, even though there was a... I remember there was a story a while back about a woman who started a TV company, a television broadcast company with nothing but women, and it ended up they were severely catty and got super competitive with each other. And then she she literally states in the, in the deal, she literally states in the article, she goes, and what made it worse was there was always, it was some, because you have an entire department full of women, someone is on their period at some point in time. <laughs> someone is a colossal bitch the entire time. It's like, no, it doesn't work that way. Most women, let me, let me explain something right now. I've worked with women, and most women that have to work together with each other will tell you, they cannot stand a woman when she is on her period. Okay, it it is hard to deal with someone, and and it's, it's it's understandable. Okay, they're miserable. You're not going to be able to you're not going to be able to do anything for a person who is just in a constant state of misery. They're not going to be happy, unless you can just walk up there, take the pain away, uh, and all that. You're you're that person's still going to be. Uh, I we, we've I'll give an example. 
I have actually had to give up jobs before because a relative has died in the middle of us doing a job. And someone in the house was just not the, so usually it was the person that was asking for the repairs to be done or a remodeling job. And they're just not happy at that point. They've lost a family member. Uh, one woman in particular, she lost her mom. And finally, like I was working with another guy and he said, I'm going to have to give up this job. He goes, I said, why is that? It was the first time I'd ever heard of it. And he went inside and told him, he said, just hire whoever you want. He said, I'm not making y'all happy. I'm willing to walk away from it. I'll take the money that I got y'all hire. Uh, he said, I'll, I'll only charge you for what I've done so far. You hire someone else that you're satisfied with and I'll, I'll let y'all do it. That dude fucked a whole bunch of stuff up when it was over with, but they were happy. They were thrilled at that point. You, the only way you're going to do that is you're going to be after basically exit the situation. So, I mean, you don't, you're not going to have women all the time work together, but there's this belief in sisterhood that progressives have and that the liberal left have, that they're not going to allow women killing each other off. So I kind of knew that Abby was going to escape. And I I was sitting there thinking, the only way you could probably bring this series back is to have Tommy get pissed at Ellie and have him go Joel. Uh, you've already killed Joel off. You're going to have to... And, and the game is selling well. Might I also mention that the game... <clears throat> For argument's sake, because i got to get this information out. The game is also not being allowed to return. We've seen this with Fallout 76, how bad that was. But like I said, you're, you're, you have... Um, and the reason this is... The reason that you, you're going to have this type of storytelling come in because of politics is... When you made... When Abby was made trans, if she had been a straight woman, if she had been a man we would have seen a much more satisfying end. All right? The the problem there is, and I say this not to be mean, but it is impossible for anyone to write a gay character and survive it. It's, it's impossible. Because one of the things you have to do to make a character... Uh, how do I put this... It's something the fourth age says all the time. He, he articulates it much better than I would. He basically states that one of the things that has to be done with a story is you have to have your story rooted in reality. So one of the things that makes story characters some of the best characters you've ever seen and that we all like is they suffer. They, they have bad things happen. Peter Parker, for instance, is one of the most popular superheroes out there, despite what Marvel says about Captain Marvel. And Peter Parker is popular because he's a regular dude. I mean, Tony Stark is cool. Captain America is, um, I would say Captain America is close to it. Uh, you got Superman, Batman, many others. But Peter Parker is the average guy. He, he deals with rent. He deals with uh, girlfriend issues. He deals with trying to keep up with his classes and everything. He's an he's an average kid with average problems, but he's also got superpowers at the same time. And so people relate to him better. And because they relate to him, it creates a bit... Their reality enables them to produce that connection because his problems are more rooted in reality. We deal with Tony Stark, you know, losing his company. There's people who have run companies before or, or have run things. They, are, they understand what that goes through. A lot of people work a nine-to-five job they, they may not connect with that very well, but you take Peter Parker who gets in trouble with at a pizza delivery place or he loses money all the time and <clears throat> his uh, superheroing activities, his responsibility of being a superhero ends up interfering with his ability to you know have a life. That's something people understand. People figure it. People look at that and they're like, oh, yeah, you know, uh, sometimes you, know, you got to help family out and you, you will end up making a sacrifice financially for family. Uh, this is one of those things that makes them relatable. The problem with trans people, though, is is not so much in, or, or even gay characters or minority characters now, is not so much can you write them, because you can give them the same problems. You can create a black Peter Parker with different superpowers, and you can create a pretty good character, and one that you could get some relation out of. The problem is, if you do that, Nowadays, and you make them suffer, and you give them hard times and everything else, 
you're going to have a group of idiots when there's 12 psychos on Twitter are going to come in there and they're going to ruin your crap and they're going to dox you and they're going to destroy you. The problem with trans characters is when an artist attempts to write them or create them, even gay characters, they don't have the freedom that they would with other characters. And thus, the left's intention to create a better world they become so clamped down, it's almost like an autoimmune response to racism to the point where the immunity system is so overcompensating for what's happening that the body actually goes into a state of anaphylactic shock or, you know, it, they start to drown in their own uh, protective body fluids, such as mucus and stuff. Mucus is actually protective to the body. Uh, it traps enzymes inside of it because it's a thick liquid and then it transfers it out of the body and that's why you have a runny nose when you get sick and you cough up phlegm you're taking infection or viral uh what is the word entities from the outer side and you're you're expelling them from the body basically the problem is if you get too much mucus you can drown in it I know that's a disgusting analogy, but just bear with me. <laughs> the problem nowadays is you've got these progressives that are so intent on shutting down uh, bigots and so so intent on finding bigots that anyone who takes a gay character and pricks their little finger and they're like, oh, ow, I've pricked my finger in any book, any movie, any comic... They suddenly, that artist that did that suddenly becomes attacked and they will go as far as to dox you, just ruin your life. <clears throat> they'll, they'll figure out where you live. Uh, to, to give you an example of just how far they'll go, take Umbrella Guy. Uh, that Umbrella Guy, they actually are currently right now threatening, they threatened him with CPS. They threatened to call in false CPS claims that he was abusing his kids. They're now claiming that people are dying and being buried on his grandfather's property. And then they've actually gone out there and damaged his mailbox. They actually ball batted the darn thing, which in my opinion I would have take I would have put up a newer, better, stronger mailbox and challenged them to hit it again and then recorded it for giggles. But that's just me. <laughs> Anywho, <clears throat> like I said, you cannot make a, a gay character suffer. You can't have them lose a lover. Uh, like Conan, for instance, Conan the Barbarian, a big, uh, a big factor that just sets him off that goes in is he loses his parents. He loses everything. He's put into captivity and slavery. But imagine if Conan were black, what kind of response you would get out of the left today? If you did Conan the Barbarian, he was black and you did it like the old 1988 uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger movie. Uh, and you made him a black boy who ends up going to slavery and does the pit fights and everything else, they would be pissed about the pit fights. They would be mad about, how dare you take a black man and, and put him in the representation as a slave? Are you some sort of bigot? Regardless of how the movie ends. Okay, I'm amazed that movie hasn't been canceled because James Earl Jones was, a, was the main villain of that movie. I'm amazed that hasn't been canceled yet. I'm just preparing for that to happen. <clears throat> But also in the movie, you have Conan loses uh, Valeria, his true love. Uh, she ends up dying, uh, protecting Conan, whatnot, and uh, he goes on. You you would have this horrible, horrible shit come down the pipeline. They they would they would demand directors' heads. They would get mad. They would demand firings, and the firings would happen. You have all these artists nowadays, and uh, even more recently, there was a chick who did. A, poke, a character from the, sh the uh, series Pokemon from the game. And she ended up doing her in a bright light, which does cause a lighter skin tone to come out. Because one of the things, you, if you know anything about skin, skin is somewhat semi-refractive. Uh, in short, um, if you hit it with enough intense light, you're going to see things like veins will begin to show it's it's you've got to remember the human body is almost 60 i think it's like 60 percent water so with it being 60 percent liquid you're going or, or h2o you're going to have some refraction of the light you're going to be able to see things so something that would look really dark in you know regular lighting get someone out in some intense sunlight they would become a really light they would become much lighter brown color or whatnot and uh there was a whole cancel culture come in because she used a lighter shade. That was it. Just a lighter shade on the character. And that, that caused uh, 
That caused two backlashes, actually. Um, that caused one, the SJWs wanted to try and cancel the artist in particular. And then it caused a bunch of other artists in response who just didn't give a crap or who had already had their lives destroyed. They came out and just started drawing absolutely Aryan versions of this character, <laughs> which were just hilarious when you sat back and watched it. And, and that's the thing about cancel culture, I'd say, that it'll ultimately lose is because the more you begin to cancel things, the tighter you squeeze. There's um, an episode of the A-Team where the A-Team go into an area and they're trying to save locally owned restaurants from a mob boss. And the mob boss is... I think it's like his son or nephew or something. He keeps going around getting brutalizing everyone and everything else. And his dad, who's the older mob boss, which I actually liked the old man. The old man was, was a good guy. He turns around and looks at me and says, Boy, I keep telling you all the time, you have got to stop squeezing so hard or they will fight back. And then the A-team starts, you know, giving him shit. And he, he slaps the kid around a little bit and says, I told you not to do this. You squeeze them too hard. <laughs> You're supposed, you've got, same thing in... Uh, Dealing with renters, you have to like squeeze them just enough. It's like, look, um, I'm going to need that money soon. You don't outright threaten them with eviction. You just tell them, look, I, I'm really going to need that money soon. Or, uh, you know, uh, in, in some cases in Missouri, people will. I don't know if that's the same thing around everywhere else. But in Missouri, one of the things they'll do is they'll uh, tie in your rent with your utilities. So then it's like, if you don't, they can say, well, look, if you do, I need that money for the utilities. If you don't pay me the rent money, I'm not. They'll, the city will come in here and shut your water and power off, and there's nothing I can do at that point. It, you'll have to pay extra to get it hooked back up. So that gives a little more incentive for people to pay. Missourians have figured this out. I don't know if it's the same thing in other places. I don't. I don't know if they you pay for that. I know in apartment complexes that's probably not a thing. But. <clears throat> Ah, where was I going with that? <laughs> oh yeah. So like I said, you're you've got these artists now that are just not free to create what they want. There's only certain characters. And by doing this crazy response by these SJWs, these SJWs cause um more segregation. They cause less uh diverse characters. They create less diversity because they make because what they're doing is they're doing almost the same action as actual racists and bigots would do. In other words, make it difficult to create art with different characters or going a different direction. Well, we'll destroy you if you do that. Well, here's the thing. If you don't do it to an exact standard, we'll destroy you. So then you end up with these characters. You end up with characters like uh, Ray from uh, Ray Palpatine from Star Wars, who's basically a Mary Sue, can do anything, Mary Sue, Mary Sue, what can Mary Sue not do? Nothing, there's nothing that Mary Sue cannot do. Uh, or you, you end up with Terminator Woke Fate, where, you know, very few problems with other characters, or you end up with superficial problems, uh, like, oh, well, you know, this Terminator needs a, a drug injection to keep it going all the time, and I'm like, why, why do that? Why can't you just program a Terminator like John Connor did? Makes no sense. Or you end up, or in terms of John Connor, you end up sacrificing John Connor for a diverse female character. <laughs> a critical drinker, I like to call it. You, you end up uh, having that chick come in there just so you can rehash the entire plot and do a complete gender swap on it. And even then, we can't do a decent uh, reiteration if you're going to go that route. Uh, you end up like I said, you end up with all these weird, messed up points, characters who can't do any wrong, because if you if you make them have consequences... For instance, uh, you take Captain Marvel. Captain Marvel, in comics, in uh, the Marvel comics recently, she ended up imprisoning Americans without due process, because one mutant was giving her one of 1,000... He could see, like, one of 1,000 possible realities... And he was always seeing the worst reality. And as it turns out, sometimes seeing that reality causes you to create that. And in Marvel Comics, it was a pretty good concept because it was like, oh yeah, you know, there'd be some some exposition on this. We, we might see something. Captain Marvel never faced consequences for that. Like, she imprisoned several thousand Americans. She had an entire uh, prison colony in high orbit. And... Never once did she face consequences for doing that. 
Miss Marvel, for instance, Camilla Khan, ended up crippling one of her friends, and they just, they were like, oh, well, you know, you crippled me, it's okay. There's like, no, no problems with it whatsoever. And they do this, artists tend to do this, because when you have these diverse characters, you're going to face a mob of terror. People who will take what you've done and bring it into the real world. They'll, they'll get revenge on you in real life, or IRL. And they will just, they'll do everything they can to shut you down, destroy you, whatever they can do, because they feel you deserve it. you got to remember, you're dealing with a bunch of mentally stunted, or actually, no, you know, the better term, we'll call a spade a spade, mentally retarded people, all right? Uh, they believe that they're right all the time. They don't understand a difference of opinion. Uh, they could go back and listen to Obi-Wan Kenobi a little bit more, because Obi-Wan Kenobi was always like, uh, you know, you're going to find out the world's pretty much, most most everything is uh, based on someone else's opinion, and you got to learn how to deal with other people's opinions. Killing them off is not always the best option. But yeah, I mean, that that's why, like I said, this is why you got what you got inside of The Last of Us Part Two. This is why Ellie is not going to kill Abby off. Well, she was never going to kill her off. She and uh, why, even though we can kill every single person that was not, that did very little of anything. In fact, if you watch the, um, I, to, to, to put that out there, they're really the only thing the other people do is they rough up Tommy, who I think is Joe's brother, in the cabin when they shoot Joel. And it's, Abby pulls the trigger. They actually put a tourniquet around his legs so he wouldn't die. Ellie still kills them off. And then when it's all said and done, uh, the chick that's on the higher progressive stack, she ends up leaving, just like walking away. Like, okay, okay, I can't kill you. You're, you're higher on the progressive stack, therefore you get progressive armor. Uh, I, you got the liberal... You got the liberal approval to live. There, even uh, there's no no amount of me killing you is going to stop it. Uh, would I recommend this game? I've never played the first one. Um, I've said this before. I'm not going to play the first one after all this because then there's the this this is what ultimately happens, and that's going to play through my mind the whole time playing the first game. I would say no. Don't spend your money on it. Uh, sec one because. It's it's a shitty storytelling. I'm not going to say it, but two, because right now GameStop is uh, you got GameStop and many other game companies are now refusing to give back refunds. And one of the things I always tell people is a good investment is one you can always get your money back off of if you're not satisfied with it. But anyway, folks, that's that's my take on The Last of Us Part Two. Uh, tell me what you think in the comments. Um, do you think politics probably? Do you think I'm right? Do you think politics played a, a role, or do you think that's probably another reason that Neil Druckmann did this nonsense? Uh, anyway, don't forget to like, subscribe if you're new to the channel, and hit the bell for notification. And as always, thank you for watching this video. Stay frosty, keep your head on a swivel, and I'll see you guys in the next video.